of Connected Kitchen. Um, to my right here is John Taylor from LG Electronics USA, and to his right is Bill Darcy from the National Kitchen and Bath Association. I'm just going to have you introduce yourselves as well. Start with you, John, and, and just tell a little bit about uh, your role in, at LG, how many CDs you've been coming to, and um, one or two quick words on, uh, on the Connected Kitchen space. John Taylor, I'm Senior Vice President for LG Electronics in uh, Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. I cover a lot of things in my sphere from mostly external relations, I would call it, on the policy and product and people side. Um, been involved in CDF for a number of years, probably 25 plus years. I remember it when it was a projector show and it was about a third this size and it was all dark, but it's been really fun to see it evolve. Um, I wear lots of hats. I'm involved in the Consumer Technology Association, currently the, the chairman of the video division there. We're working a lot in the area of uh, smart home and smart connectivity. And uh, the Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers as well. I've been on their board for many years and I'm actually currently the chairman of that board. Um, also very focused on connected appliances. Um, we'll get into a lot more detail, I know, but uh, LG's view is that the the kitchen is the epicenter of the smart home. Hi, I'm Bill Darcy. I'm the CEO of the National Kitchen and Bath Association, um, owners of KBiz, um, as well as having a, a network of 70 chapters in North America. Uh, we have a, a huge learning environment as well. Um, pleased to endorse Cedia two years ago um, and excited to continue to partner with Emerald Expositions uh, to support it. We have a, a group of certified designers here this week and curated tours and really just trying to help our design community uh, connect better with the integrator community. And that's really our primary purpose. So great to be, uh, be part of the panel. Thank you. Well, we couldn't have asked for uh, a better group to join us today to talk about the Connected Kitchen. And it's interesting to see Cedia evolve to be more of a home, you know, just the, uh, the traditional kind of meeting room. But I want to dive in because we have a half hour. This can easily be an all-day session, so we're going to jump right in. Um, the Smart Kitchen is evolving very, very quickly. It's becoming more digital. It's becoming more multimodal. And many companies, including Google, are creating platforms to meet that trend head on, right? technology that removes that friction from every stage of the food preparation and the, the meal process. So, John, you were just, just referring, and many analysts are concurring with this, that the kitchen is becoming the most dynamic room in the home. How do you see the, the, the how do you see that trend happening, and, and how do you see this evolving as kind of this fall into 2020? Maybe not necessarily a new concept. For many years, the kitchen has been the heart of the home, but I think the dynamism comes from connectivity and the fact that more and more of these appliances are connected. Uh, you know, LG was proud that, I'm not gonna turn this into a big LG commercial today, but as a proof point, um, we were early to have Wi-Fi capability across all of our appliances, not just in the, in the kitchen, but in the laundry room as well. And that's, that was really the key enabler to take it to the next step. And especially today, as we look ahead to AI, artificial intelligence, and how uh, different apps and technologies will continue to evolve and understand your lifestyle and to, to really um, make your, I think it's all about convenience and uh, not necessarily technology for technology's sake. We'll get into that a little more too. So Bill, your organization has fielded a, a really interesting study recently um, that had some, some findings that I want to share. So. Consumers mentioned that the top three areas where consumers are looking for knowledge from designers, and yeah, I've brought many of them here today to, to see you, are smart appliances, Wi-Fi connectivity, and centralized lighting controls. Can you elaborate a little bit further? Yeah, a little bit more of what John said, that we see um, our designers and our members are seeing things that are very purposeful and practical, not just for the sake of technology. They want it to improve their lives and really make their more efficiencies you know, in their kitchen. Uh, interestingly enough though, we uh, only about, uh, our designers are only recommending technology about 30% of their jobs. So we think this is a big opportunity, uh, a big opportunity to get back to the connecting the design community with the integrator community because certainly the consumer interest continues to grow and grow. John, question for you. LG is a leader in the uh, consumer electronics industry. We're announcing the launch of the 88-inch 
OLED TV. I'm going to have to clear some wall space. Like that. Um, screens are taking over kitchens too. Right? Homeowners are using tech to look up recipes, shop groceries online, exchange messages with friends, get free prep tips, and many more. How are you and LG thinking about the future of screens within the kitchen? It's a relatively new concept. Are they going to be embedded within appliances? Are they standalone units? Combination? What's your thoughts? It's going to be a combination for sure. Um, you know, if you look at the design of today's homes, you know, it's not like the standalone kitchen with a separate dining room and, uh, and your living room. It's, there's such a trend toward the uh, open living plan. And it's, it's like considered one space. So that 88 inch 8K OLED in the break room will clearly be visible from the kitchen. But we think uh, screens are gonna take on more and more importance in the kitchen itself. And this is where the Google Nest Hub comes into play. Uh, we've had screens on refrigerators and you know, some of it is a little gimmicky to be, uh, to be frank, but um, that's gonna continue to evolve. But the Google devices, especially, relevant I think because it can be right on the countertop and if you wanted to see a, a video of how to fillet that fish uh, it, it's readily available but more importantly from our standpoint when you look at other partners like say in it or side chef that uh, have tens of thousands of recipes and uh, that app is compatible with the um, both the Google Assistant and the LG range or oven, um, you're able to really have a seamless experience. Um, walking you through the steps, the, uh, the app will set your oven to the precise temperature for, for baking or roasting and would make the adjustments needed throughout the recipe automatically for you. So again, I think an example of how smart technology can help make your life more convenient. And just interesting, uh, you know, one of the trends that we're seeing in the home, particularly a lot of millennials, is over the concept of kitchens. And, so you mentioned the 88 screen TV, but watching the football from there, but then wanting to take your recipes and, and have a really integrated sort of experience within that, that kitchen while you're watching sports. We call it the dual screen experience, and there's probably that uh, third or fourth screen with your mobile device in there too. So, Bill, back to, back to you. From this study, you talked about some of the barriers for designers and, and integrators that are here today to overcome the installing new tech. Um, some were lack of familiarity benefits. There's a lot of gadgets that are that are being introduced. What are the benefits? Um, cybersecurity concerns. We're all, of course, uh, concerned about that. Google has tackled that. We talked about that uh, on the main stage as their top priority. And then uncertainty with compatibility with other home or mobile devices, right? So let's talk about the first one, the lack of familiarity with benefits. Education is a huge initiative of, of Google, and that's part of why we're, we're here today. Um, also, NKBA and the Internet of Things Consortium. What do you think our collective industry can do better to communicate the benefits of integrating technology into kitchen settings, both to designers and customers? Yeah, as you say, the, the, um, what, what our designers are feeling is not necessarily what the consumers are saying to us, and that only 14% um, of consumers say that it's a lack of familiarity. They think that they have familiarity, so we're trying to educate our design community about you know, catching up with the consumer, which is very challenging. Um, our, our study showed that the consumers tell us it's perceived high cost, it's um, the security, potential security risks, those types of things, and also the upgradability or this device that I purchased or this appliance I purchased, historically, there was not an upgrade factor with software and those types of things in the connection side. So those are all concerns, I think, that our, um, our members are finding the consumer community to do. Um, but I think our designers, we need to continue to educate them more and bring them to events like this so they're becoming more and more familiar with the expertise that the CD community has to really work with them as partners. Makes a lot of sense. John, in the same study, frequent tech users in the kitchen self-identified as millennials, 43%. Not talking with kids in their in their household, 61 percent. They're seeking ways to make their lives easier by integrating the smart kitchen tech seamlessly with other systems in their house. How do you think at LG about sort of use cases for millennials versus baby boomers? We focus on a lot of millennials in, in our world, but there's a huge marketplace, right, of individuals that have a lot of time, a lot of disposable income, are living longer. How does LG think about? Speaking as one of the baby boomers in the room, uh, we're not exactly known 
as early adopters, but um, learning a lot from our children, I think. Uh, as a company, we do focus a lot on the millennials. Uh, don't forget the Gen X's between them. You know, that's really between the baby boomers and the millennials. Um, and the Gen Z's are coming on strong too. So, uh, but that sweet spot from our standpoint are the Gen Xers and the, the older millennials. There was a time in the last several years that people were writing off the millennials. They don't have the disposable income. Um, you know, they, they're really not focused on their, their future. But, you know, these uh, more mature millennials are starting families, they're buying homes, they're building homes, uh, they're buying amazing kitchens. And these are this is the generation that grew up with the iPhone. They grew up with their tablets. They grew up with PCs that some of us didn't work with, frankly. So um, our challenge is to get the message to the right audience. and. Um, LG has a, um, a super luxury new brand that we call Signature Kitchen Suite. We've actually defined uh, a consumer that we call the Technicurian. The Technicurian. This is the, the, the consumer who has a, a love and appreciation of technology and cooking. And um, it's not a huge market out there, but that's our target, and we're getting to them. And that's. Um, they also have a, a keen interest in uh, in advanced design and, and creating um, the, the home of the future today. So, you know, it's interesting. I want to kind of dive into that a little bit. Um, one of the areas that we're talking about with Google throughout the two days is this differentiator between the homeowner and the renter and the Airbnb community, right? And it's evolving. There's a lot of a lot of people that are moving and saying, "Now what I do with, with my connected devices." Um, we know that customers are looking for tech solutions that make meal, meals and prep easier. But do you both, I'm asked just to, to both of you, I'll start with Bill. Do you think the bigger opportunity is with larger appliances or smaller appliances that might be portable? To share your your perspective. I think it's actually both. I think it's really how you're using your kitchen, and the, you know, historically, the kitchen is where the food is made and created. But we know now it's much, much more than that. So, really, it's uh, I think our design community um, members working with the consumer to define how they're going to use their kitchen. Maybe it's only a part-time cooking environment, but they still want it to behave in the way they want it to behave. So, I think it's really the, you know, your urban environment. We are seeing more adoption in the larger homes, as we're John seeing as well. But like 3,000 square foot home and above is where really the easier adoption option is in, in new construction, um, but I think it's really a matter of, of what is the purpose, and many people use it for different reasons. Somebody might want an awesome kitchen, they're never going to cook in that kitchen, you know, so I, I think it's all spectrums of how you are using it, and I think partnering with the consumer to define that, and, and incorporating the CD community as a, a, a business partner in helping decide what is best for the for what you're trying to fulfill for your home home. John. There's a saying in the industry when a very high-end consumer is installing a new kitchen and a question, are you a cooker or a looker? And usually they end up with the same very high-end appliances, but at least in my home, and I'm about to redo my, my kitchen, the best thing my wife makes for dinner is reservations. But back to your point about, uh, I mentioned earlier in, uh, in it, side chef, um, Someone like my wife and my family would like Tovala, which is uh, going to deliver to our doorstep free, pre-made meals, customized to our lifestyle and uh, healthy, fresh food. That all we need to do is go to the Tovala app, and it automatically do everything with the smart oven. And depending on the recipe, um, it will even instruct the dishwasher to be on a certain. Uh, scrub level because of what you've been cooking. So anything that's going to make your life easier with a touch of a button on an app. So Google is definitely one of the leaders in voice technology. It's one of the areas that's, that's prevalent throughout CEDIA this year. Um, what use cases do you think our, our industry can look towards within, this, within the kitchen specifically? You mentioned kind of the recipe. Um, we're seeing at, at IOTC, we're seeing sort of this combination of voice and video really take off this year, particularly in things like food preparation, right? That, that people actually need to visualize what they're seeing once they get the, the, the recipe. What are some of the voice applications that you're, you're seeing in your system? 
get to speak from personal experiences. So I have, I have three young children. Um, my wife's a stay-at-home mom. She loves Pinterest for recipes. So her, her counter looks like a disaster, which I have no good or bad opinion on because I can't do anything very well in, in that area. But she's got the laptop open. She's got Pinterest there. She's got the voice, you know, playing something. And all these things are not really designed to be interacting as the best they could be. So I think you're right, Greg. I think a lot of it is about how do you, the voice meets the screen to support the activity going on in the kitchen, like food preparation. For, for in my family, it's all about the food prep and how the technology helps that. Sure. Looking ahead in 2020 in the United States, we're going to introduce a feature called proactive customer care. So it's beyond features and benefits. It's really helping get ahead of issues. So if you leave the refrigerator door open or if there seems to be a cooling issue, um, you know, it will alert you. If it's time to replace the water filter in your refrigerator, it will alert you. Um, if you're laundry is oversetting, you're putting in too much detergent, it will sense that and let you know. So I think the more that these products learn and evolve, learn your lifestyle, uh, see how they're used, you know, it's going to continue to continue to get better and better. Mm, really interesting. All right, let's talk about entertainment in the kitchen. If you were at the last session, the music started going on in the, towards the end, hopefully. That won't happen right now, but I say it's, it's party time. Right? The definition of kind of, of party time or some of these new recipes that are being, or routines that are being um, developed. Google's Nest, Google's Nest Hub Max is bringing entertainment to the, to the uh, kitchen. Content, phones, you mentioned Pinterest, home control. I mean, we don't have a crystal ball, but the industry is evolving. What, what, John, what's your prediction for the future of home entertainment? and infotainment in the kitchen. We talked about this open concept philosophy, multi-screen. What are you seeing taking place? What are your customers doing? We're seeing more and more of the infotainment, if you will, that's tied into all of these devices. And because the, the rooms are all one now, we're still focused a lot on the entertainment angle in the main living space, for instance. Um, but that's all connected to with the Google capability in our smart TVs. You don't even have to say, hey, Google. You just push the Google button, and you say, I'm going to watch a movie, and your lights will dim, your shades will come down, um, and you can it will tell your refrigerator to make more ice because you're, you're going to be ready to hunker in for the evening. So it's, it's more of an overall lifestyle, not necessarily uh, tied to the kitchen. Um, but there, there are intersections, again, uh, with these new, the new generation of smart TVs. We have uh, what we call a whole home uh, dashboard for whole home energy management. Um, you could get an alert uh, on your screen that tells you when your dishwasher is done or when your washing cycle is done on your washing machine, so it's time to put it in the dryer. So, you know, think of it as a more holistic way to look at managing your home. So I don't know about everybody in the audience, but when I throw a reception in my home, no matter how we, we try to get everyone into every room, everyone congregates in the kitchen. That's where the party starts and, and it ends. But there's this interesting trend that's because there's so much time spent in the kitchen that folks are looking to control their home from the kitchen area. John, any thoughts on what's driving this trend? Is it that people are spending more time in the kitchen? Or? People have always spent time in the kitchen, but more and more, there's more technology in the kitchen today that will enable that. As we mentioned, with the Wi-Fi capability across a broad range of products, and not just the products we make, which are the major appliances, but you mentioned some of the smaller appliances too, all being connected, all being part of an ecosystem that will help make your life easier. I think it just underscores the importance of the room in the, in the, uh, in the home. It's just, it is the place where you spend the most time. You want to see what's going on out your front door when someone knocks from the kitchen. You want to see everything from the kitchen. And as you say, when you have that big new LG screen in the living room, you're, you're pretty much in the kitchen watching it too. So um, it, it is a place where everything is happening and the, and the pace of how it's evolving with technology is just, I'm really excited. I was fortunate to be able to visit uh, LG's uh, Immersion Center in Napa and see all the great products they had and for what Google's coming out with. I mean, I think it's, it's an exciting time for the consumer and the trade to kind of 
uh, just really make our houses even more desirable to live in. And getting more exciting. So we're going to talk a little bit about, there's all these new players that are coming into the kitchen, into the home environment, from service delivery companies. Walmart had a recent announcement that they're going to enable service delivery folks to come into the home, place within that in the kitchen, extremely interesting, meal prep apps, robots, particularly coming out of Asia, that are designed in all, all different four factors. LG has a, a number. What kind of unique partnerships? And partnerships is a key thread of, of our conversations here at, at, at Google Nest Pro. What kind of unique partnerships do you expect will be introduced within the next year or two that might be surprising to some of the, the, uh, the audience members here? quite a few of them already in the cooking space, but our, our approach is called Open Platforms, Open Partnerships. Um, you know, some people in our space kind of develop their own approach. We, we have our own smart technology called LG ThinQ, T-H-I-N-Q, but that's sort of an umbrella over everything that's smart. And um, our first and favorite partner has been Google, but we also work with Amazon Alexa and, and others. And, um, you know, the, the sky's the limit. I mean, we have development tools that will allow people to develop apps that are compatible with our smart appliances, and we're reaching out to find the right partners. Um, for competitive reasons, I can't give you any inside skinny. You'll have to wait until CES for that. Bill? And just second what John said. I think we're, you know, we're um, hopeful that the design community and the manufacturing community work together to deliver the best experience for the consumer, which sometimes is difficult when you have different products, uh, both competitors working amongst the same space, and um, so it's, it's a big challenge to try to deliver that experience without, you know, in new construction it's a little easier than a remodel, but I think in the remodel the challenge is trying to not jeopardize the opportunity for the consumer to upgrade or, or develop a, a space because they must use just certain things that only connect to certain things. We just want to kind of build on that last piece you talked about, kind of remodel versus new, new construction. Any thoughts just on the difference of the connected kitchen within those two, right? Kind of thinking about retro, retrofitting an existing uh, kitchen versus building for, for new. Our studies show that there's more happening faster in the new construction, um, but there's there's a lot of interest being driven by the consumer uh, in the remodel space as well. And I think it's understanding what are the barriers. Um, again, trying to educate our design designer members and uh, all members and remodelers uh, about uh, what opportunities there are, what do they need to learn. It really it goes back to the, me, the partnership um, with the integrator. Uh, because if you, you meet with your consumer and they you can kind of understand what they want, and if you're not able to articulate the barriers or, or define those or overcoming those without that te technology integrator partner. So I think it's including them as early as possible in, in the process so you define the room that's what the consumer's ex meets the expectations, exceeds the expectations of the consumer. One other quick thing to add, we wholeheartedly agree that the new builds and are top of the list, but, and then you have remodels, but there's also the market for what we call distressed purchases. Your washing machine just died. You've had it for 15 years. Your refrigerator is dead. Um, this is an opportunity, an opportunity to step people up, to introduce them smart appliances <clears throat> that may be their first connected device in the home and we want them to have a tremendous experience to start that journey the smart home journey you guys have been an amazing crowd and i want to leave uh, some room for you to ask questions but i'm gonna you tease us with ces so i'm gonna end with with uh i guess we've covered a lot of ground we can easily have a full day discussion on this what are you most excited to see here at CD with respect to the connected uh, kitchen industry and also key to coming up at, at CES, whether it's your own companies or, or other companies? So As I mentioned at the outset, we've seen CD evolve over the years. And it's, there's still a very heavy AV focus here, um, but it's more than just home theater. It's whole home audio. It's uh, whole home automation, security systems, and now the smart kitchen, and I, I think uh, kudos to Cedia for continuing to evolve that way. Um, the mother of all trade shows is CES in January in, in Las Vegas. Um, almost too big to cover the whole thing in four or five days, uh, but this is the, the convergence of just about everything in the smart space um, with an overlay of uh, 5G and next-gen television and uh, connectivity and resiliency and it's, uh, 
it's all coming together under this uh, under the umbrella of a smart collect connected lifestyle. Uh, and I would add the best place to really experience that is at Bill's show, uh, the kitchen and bath industry show, um, which is I believe the, the true epicenter of the conversation uh, surrounding the smart kitchen of the future. Thank you, John, for that. And, you know, it, as we started, they uh, create the partnership with the National Association of Home Builders to create Design and Construction Week. And really, it continues to grow and grow and, and really see the whole home environment um, with, with the importance of the kitchen and bath there. But I hope that that's the start of what we're doing with Cedia and really building the relationship and the partnership because we have seen such dynamic relationships develop, which you would think would have already existed with home builders and designers and remodelers. But I think it's amplified with the events like that. And I think that's what we're hoping to do with our partnership with Cedia is really continue to develop the relationship between those people that are maybe only focused to go into one show and but partnering with everybody else that really, you know, delivers the experience of the consumer's design. Terrific. Okay, I want to open up the floor. We probably have time for two questions, so don't be shy. I'm known to call out people. Here we go. I'm just going to ask you to introduce yourself and your company. My name is Arun. I run an investment bank out of New York. We help many industries grow in new markets. So my question is, from a policy standpoint, how is your association and manufacturers like you and service providers like Google Nest helping policy being shaped up to build all of these new features and benefits into the construction code for new builders to adopt that, not as a matter of choice, but as a matter of uh, mandatory, regulatory, compliance kind of system. Are you working on those angles? pretty complex issue, especially when you look at what states are doing and even municipalities. Uh, we as a manufacturer have to deal with this patchwork of maybe 50 state regulations. Um, there are certain areas like cybersecurity, privacy, we think should have a federal solution uh, that would preempt the states from going off, especially some of the more rogue states like California going off and doing their own thing. Um, but in terms of building codes, the building codes are focused half traditionally been more focused on safety, um, as they should con will continue to, but it's a brave new world of uh, connected devices and smart, and um, I don't think we have, anybody has the, uh, the magic bullet, but engagement is key uh, for those of us in the industry to engage the, uh, the policy makers and make sure that they understand the benefits to the consumer and the challenges that, uh, that integrators and builders face. Anybody else? Time for one more question. No? Going once, going twice. Okay, I want to thank you, and, and in particular, I'd like to thank John, thank you very much, and Bill for joining us. Everyone can give them a round of applause. And thank you all for joining us here at, at uh, Google Nest Pro's group. We'll be up programming throughout the, the day and the week. Um, come ask any questions independently if you'd like, and enjoy the rest of the show.